Hello, welcome back to Emperor's Path. My name is SBJ. As you can see, we're not at our usual location. Uh, so I'm doing some renovation stuff in my office, trying to make it a better space and a space where I don't make an absolute mess. Um, a few things that are going on in the background, but obviously I still want to keep doing videos. So I am now positioned in my bedroom in a corner. Um, today we are doing my top five diesel or electric locos that I want to purchase in the future. Um, if you clicked on this because you think it's my top five favorite of all time, I apologize. Uh, one bit of feedback I did get about the Steam video was that the it was misleading in the sense that people thought it was my all time favorite Steam loco, so I apologize. So if you've clicked on this video, uh, it is going to be the top five Steam locos that I do not currently own uh, and would like to purchase in the future. Um, a quick rundown, if you if this is the first video you've watched of mine, uh, I, I like Steam, uh, but there's not a lot of it on my layout. I don't have a lot of DCC ready Steam to run around. Uh, so that video would probably come as quite a surprise to uh, most people because I don't talk about Steam a lot. However, diesels and electrics, that's where my heart lies. Uh, certainly at the moment anyway. Um, Hopefully there's going to be some in here that you're not expecting. Chances are you could probably write all of these down and place your bets before this video finishes. So without further ado, let us start at number five. Okay, so starting at number five, we have the Hornby Class 56. So I've loved this logo for quite a long time. Um, I love the build of it, it just looks like such a brute, like a, a, it looks so chunky and, and especially the bogeys on it, they look huge. Um, I recently had the joy of weathering Sanford East's Class 56, uh, which was a rail freight liveried one and it was beautiful. Um, it was about the same size as my Rail Freight Class 47 and I weathered the two at the same time, uh, more for a comparison for myself. Um, this loco was absolutely stunning. It was so, so pretty. Uh, I really, really want, want one. Um, the problem is, is that I think it only, my, f I really like it in the rail freight livery, but I don't love it as much in, in any of the other liveries. The other problem is that I have a lot of rail freight livery locos, but not a lot of freight to move around. It's very much a passenger. Uh, sort of base layout, so I don't want to have too much freight based stuff. So yeah, that's why it's at number five and not necessarily higher on the list. So let's move on to number four. Okay, so holding up the number four spot is a nice little diesel, and I in the previous video, there's, I said that there's certain things that until I'd seen them in person, I wasn't that fussed about them. Uh, and this is the Backman Class 20. Now, I went to the Watercrest Lines Diesel Gala back in the summer and went with my father-in-law and they had uh, a double-headed Class 20 setup uh, running up and down the line, pulling the 40C, uh, pulling passenger coaches and stuff like that. And seeing these in the flesh, I thought they looked absolutely gorgeous and I was a little bit I had to do that sort of, okay, I was wrong. These are actually quite cool. I now understand what the point of them is. Um, they're so tiny. Like I didn't think they'd be as tiny as they are, but my God, do they accelerate quickly. When we were on the coaches that were being pulled by the class 20s, they shot off. Like we got on the 66 and it was smooth. It gradually accelerated and sort of went, went up the line. But on the class 20s, it was like, whoa, and you sort of flew back. And, I just I was very impressed with them. Um, they sound great. Uh, those of you who don't know, my class 08 shunter has a class 20 sound decoder in it because when I was doing it, I couldn't afford a class 8 chip, so I bought a class 21 really, really cheap. Uh, and I thought they sounded similar. I now know they don't sound as similar as I thought, but similar enough that it's the only sound like on my layout. Another reason that this one isn't as high as I would like it to be is because in my heart, now that I've seen them double-headed, I wouldn't be able to have them 
running single and I know they ran single uh, but in my heart I'd want to have two of them to run whether that's that there's one at the one end and one at the other end of a train or whether they're both at the same end but they look stunning um, once again I really like this in the rail freight livery um, it does come in other liveries and I think that this could be a potential one it'd be very expensive so I don't know if I could manage this but it could be a potential one to do will it NSE um, having a double-headed network southeast class 20 uh, running passenger services up and down the line I think that would look really cool uh, but we're talking somewhere in the region about 250 300 pounds for the two locos to then repaint them so I haven't done one that pricey yet so it's not not in my wheelhouse right now but yeah class 20s Love it in the rail freight livery. Uh, it does have other liveries available, but that's the one that always catches my eye whenever I'm looking at eBay and uh, the different rail sites that you have. So, moving on to number three. Okay, so at number three, I before Christmas, I had a commission of weathering a class 416, uh, and it was the Backman Collector's Edition set. Uh, so the class 416 is a two car EMU. Um, two EPB? I believe it's two EPB. I'm looking at my computer and I can't see it. Um, and I never rode in these. These are something that I didn't have in my childhood, but I love the look of them. Um, this one was, I, it's a little bit like the class 56 really, but I weathered the Network Southeast class 416 and the more I weathered it, the more I really didn't want to send it back. Um, so I'm now on the hunt for a Network Southeast class 416. Um, I recently at the Portsmouth Model Railway show saw a layout where they had uh, two sets of two running in parallel in a consist, which looked really nice as well, which would also fit my layout a lot better because uh, I could hook the two sets up together and run them off. So there's a lot of doubles coming up in this in this series, so I apologize. But um, yeah, Network Selfie is class 416. Um, one thing that I was surprised about compared to any other Network Southeast things that I've done with Backman is the blue was perfect like it i find the whenever somebody does the new network southeast i find it's too dark um even though they changed it to the darker one because the old one faded i any videos i look at the darker ones are still just as faded and almost look like the early network southeast stuff but the color on this one was perfect and i was very jealous of it so Ideally, I'd like a set of class 416 in Network Southeast and a class 416 in Intercity Blue and Grey because I, I love it when they mismatch units hooking up together and that would be something that I'd love to see on the layout um, running passenger services. Uh, so yeah, um, a lot of people tell me that this was really cheap when the commuter sets were available and if you look on eBay and stuff now, they're not, they're not cheap, not cheap at all. Uh, so that is something that I... Yeah, need to need to work on, need to address. So uh, I c I'll keep my eye out. As says number three, it's in a pretty prime position. I'd love to get some of these. And I'm going to keep an eye out on the various websites uh, to see if any come up at a good price. So yeah, moving on to number two. So with number two, as with the steam list. There's always been one thing holding me off on this particular loco. So the 3MT on the steam list, um, I love the loco, I love the look of it. It's To me, it looks like the perfect size. It's not too big and it's not too small, um, but I've seen nothing but terrible reviews on it, of it online. The same can be said for this one. So the Dapol Class 73. Now, I've seen various other YouTube channels uh, and forums and stuff like that saying how bad the Dapol Class 73 is. Uh, poor running, uh, uh, just 
issues all over the place and it really put me off because I really love the look of these. Um, I recently discovered a YouTube channel called, called Soy Banco. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that right, but I will put a link to their channel down below. The reason I found this is because they're one of the few YouTube channels that have some old school 90s and 80s videos from around my area. So stations that I know and can recognize and see how they've changed in the years. Um, and there's two particular videos that they've done, uh, one of which is in Portsmouth, in Portsmouth and South Sea. Uh, and it's a it's a beautiful video. Um, in fact, when I put the link down below, I'm going to put this particular video as the link. Um, and you have loads of EMUs going in and out, as that was the case in Portsmouth. We just constantly had EMUs all over the show. Um, and basically, a Class 73 Battle of Britain in Network Southeast pulls a passenger service in um, and basically takes it all the way down to Portsmouth Harbour and detaches. Now, during this video, in between moments, there's this Class 50, Royal Oak, um, which comes in uh, to the yard in between Fratton and Portsmouth and South Sea and sort of idles there. Once the Class 73 goes through, basically what happens is the Class 50 goes all the way down and then picks up the carriages and takes them away. Now, when I looked up where this was going, it looked as if that this train came from Brighton to Portsmouth Harbour with a Class 73. Class 73 then detaches, Class 50 then picks it up and takes it all the way down to Bournemouth. That's the best I could find. I couldn't find exact numbers or anything like that, but I just, I love the idea of that. I think it's such a cool little idea and it does have the potential that if I did get a 73, I could imitate this by having it pull a passenger service into the sidings, detach, and then the class 50 comes, picks it up and takes it away. But lovely little things like that, I, I'd love to see. Um, now, the reason that this is at the number two spot is because recently I've had some uh, people who have told me how good their DAPOL class 73s are. Um, and specifically this is NSE Latchmere on Instagram and Trains by Laurie on Instagram who I will put both of their Instagram accounts in the description below. Um, now they've said how fantastic these kits are and that was all I needed to sort of sway me. So I'm keeping an eye out on eBay for them. I'd happily repaint one if it was at the right price. Um, but I do, despite the fact that the livery does not match the era that I'm modeling. I do really like the Southwest Trains Class 73. Um, and I don't recall seeing any of these when I was younger, but the livery is the livery that I remember for most of my teenage years uh, growing up, and it looks really cool. Um, another video that Soy Banco does is also a, uh, basically Bournemouth train station where uh, EMUs are coming in, or uh, class 40 C's are coming in attached to other multiple units. And then there's a lot of intercity class 73's in the Swallow or executive livery. Um, and I believe that this is the most Southern, the intercity livery sort of dominated on the South Coast bar going down to like Penzance uh, with the HST's. So that was quite cool to see because there was a lot of 73's in intercity livery as well. It wasn't like a one-off, there was a lot of them in the video. Um, so yeah, I'll include, all those bits about this class 73 uh, down below um, but yeah number two spot this is highly sought after on my list <music> moving on to number one now if I buy this brand new with no deals this would be the most expensive loco that I have ever purchased uh, I can't justify it at the moment, but if I can save or sell some things or do X, Y, and Z to purchase one, then I will get it. I, I think I'll be gutted if I don't. However, this shouldn't come as a surprise to many people. I've been waiting for it to come out and the release date keeps getting pushed back. So We'll see, we'll see when this comes out, but it's definitely on my list and it's my number one that I'd love to get. And that is the Hornby Class 423 4VEP uh, in Southwest Trains livery. These are 
network southeast and southwest trains are the two liveries i remember growing up um it was a very clever move by southwest trains because what they did was they basically kept the majority of the colors from network southeast and let me make sure i get this right so they basically moved the red strip um up to where the main white section was with the livery there's a there's a picture here so you can see all of this anyway uh, but they made they moved the red strip to where the main white section was they made where the red strip was orange and they made where the gray strip was white but they still had that feel of the network southeast because they had that massive blue and they had the red and the white um just in slightly different configurations and it was a very clever market i'm going to say marketing ploy or ease of like cost saving exercise who knows but they did very well doing this uh, and it's nice because you could have the two next to each other and it wasn't too clashing um when hornby announced this loco it a rush of um, memories and bits and bobs came back to me because this is what i remember most from my childhood um so yeah uh looking at a particular website at the moment if you were to purchase this brand new at the current pre-order price it would be 362 pounds and 99 pence which i can't justify at the moment i know this is an expensive hobby and i know things cost a lot um at the moment my internals cannot deal with that if i can sort a deal out or sell some stuff then i might be able to justify it but if i was just to buy that straight off the bat i don't think i could so yeah so that's my top five uh i want to make an honorable mention for something that currently doesn't exist and i believe there's a lot of people out there who believe the same thing i don't feel like there is a big enough market of electric multiple units i don't feel there's enough of them out there um, obviously the 423 coming out will increase this but at the moment you've got a lot of two car units but considering especially on the south coast they were dominated by four car units that were sometimes put in rakes of 12 um, especially Portsmouth to Waterloo you, you it wouldn't be an odd sight to see three sets of four hooked up going off to Waterloo um, I just think it's a shame that there's not like a a good enough selection of them out there so i'm gonna make a request to any company who may be watching this if you could make a a nice kit even even if it's to um, i know there's a lot of kit bits out there and that's the problem is a lot of people are scared to do kits myself included i've, I've got the basis to start a kit build but I, i'm so petrified of doing it and um, even with people's encouragement and help and stuff like that it's such a scary process when you've spent x amount of money getting the basis for it to then possibly ruin it um so yeah i would like to see a class 313 or i think it's 313 331 i can't remember basically the units that are still i believe they are now the oldest electric units on the network still running and it's the ones that basically run Portsmouth to Brighton sort of you get a lot of the newer units are now sort of coming in I say newer units they're still old um the 355s they're I believe that's what's on there at the moment but yeah 313s or something similar to that um I'm really happy that there's a lot of the ones that resemble the ones I remember from a child like the 411s and the 423s I would love it if there are a few more options out there Especially when you consider how many companies make class 47s and like class 37s. There's so many out there. The market is technically flooded with the same locos. It'd be nice if we had some other variations. I'm not into business. I don't know how it works. I can't necessarily say that it would be a good idea, but I believe there would be a big enough market for it. A lot of modelers who were around when a lot of these locos were running predominantly would love to see things like this on the network. Um, there's loads of DMUs, like your DMUs you can't, there's so many, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my top five. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave your top five diesel and electric locos down below. Um, as always, massive thank you to my coffee supporters. I'm going to start calling it coffee, I can't be bothered to switch between the two uh, massive thank you to my coffee supporters if you would like to purchase an emperor's path t-shirt you can get it at the rev 
bubble link which is down below. Uh, if you want to follow most of what I do, you can find it on Instagram uh, where I post a lot of my content there. So you may see things a lot earlier on there than you will on here. Uh, otherwise, please, the usual things, leave a comment down below, tell me what you like or even tell me what you didn't like. Um, and leave a like, comment, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But thank you very, very much for watching this video. My name's SBJ and I'll see you guys in two weeks time. Bye.